Hello, Prasam sir. We are live now. You can start. Okay, thank you. Hello and good evening, everyone. Myself, Prasam sir, and on behalf of our Optom team, I welcome everyone who are connected to us on this e-learning session. A brief introduction of our program. For Optom student presentation is initiated by For Optom team. where student presents on different optometry related topics today we have ms sumaiya taj with us she is currently a third year bsc optometry student of saptagiri institute of medical science and research center bangalore she is presenting on the topic ocular changes due to aging i request all our audience to post their queries in live chat box which we will discuss at the end of presentation on behalf of for optum team i welcome you sumaiya over to you thank you so much hello good evening everybody my name is sumaiya <clears throat> and my topic for today is ocular changes due to aging the sixth stage shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose pouch on side his youthful house well saved a world too wide for his shrunk shack and his big manly voice turning again towards childish treble pipes and whistles and his sound so this is a very famous poem by william shakespeare where he talks about the changes uh, in the stages of life in the end where we are old and we have like spectacles on our nose and pouch on side so he talks about the natural process of aging so the content of my presentation is all of these so aging it is a progressive physiological process and it is characterized by degeneration of tissues and organ systems with consecutive loss of functional reserves of the system so in aging it is a very progressive it is a gradual physiological process it's a very natural process and it is characterized by degeneration that is the breaking down of the tissues and organs and a slowly loss of functional reserve or uh, decrease in the functioning of the organs so in this picture we can see different changes that happens in the old age you will have a baggy lower eyelids and you have tear drop and there is blepharochiasis and you can see crow's feet these are the certain changes that happens in the face and today mainly we'll talk about the eye so moving on to the first ocular structure that is eyelid it is the thin fold of skin that covers it is the protective layer of our eye so we'll see what changes happens in the eyelid firstly there is loss of toneness which means there is a loss of tone in the muscles of our eye so there is a weakening of the levator palpebral palpebral superioris our mullus mullus muscles so these muscles are mainly responsible for lifting the upper eyelid so when these muscles become weak the lifting up of the upper eyelids become difficult and it causes ptosis ptosis is the drooping of the eyelid and uh, this loss of the tone causes reduced movement so there is less movement in the eye and there is decrease eicane and apocrine secretion so these are secreted by apocrine gland in the eyelid and uh, these glands secrete sebum and th the sebum that is produced it helps in keeping the lashes supple but during old age what happens there is a decrease in the secretions of these glands and that makes the eyelid eyelashes for to fall on the cornea and it hence causes irritation next one is gradual tissue atrophy uh, in the mesodermal layer so mesodermal layer is the layer that is present in between the ectoderm layer and the endoderm layer these are the germ layers uh, through which the organs arise and what happens is that the content of the body slowly begins to shrink so the mesodermal layer that is present it will start shrinking and the ectoderm layer of the skin it will start stretching the next change is the ectoderm layer so what happens in the ectoderm layer of the skin it will slowly start to stretch and it becomes large so you will see skin folds and then wrinkles and all start to appear and the folds of skin are seen and there is loss of adnexa 
that is the structural support of the tarsal plate. So tars we know that tarsal plate is present in the upper lid and the lower lid. So there is a uh, decrease in the support of the tarsal plate and canthal tendons and orbicularis muscle. So orbicularis muscle helps in closing the eyelid. And this causes orbital fat prolapse. So because of the loss of the adnexal structure, there is a, a condition that is caused that is called as orbital fat prolapse, which is a movable fat, a movable yellowish mass of the skin that is seen in the conjunctiva. And uh, it is caused due to the thinning of the tendon capsule or the weakening of the tendon capsule in, and it is mostly seen in the superior temporal quadrant. So here we can see it is mainly present in the superior temporal quadrant. Another change that will happen is eyelid malposition. So the positioning of the eyelid will change. It will uh, move from its original position. And then we have blephroptosis, that is drooping of the eyelid and you have excessive tearing. The next thing is horizontal lid laxity. So horizontal lid laxity means like the loss of the lid structure, like the flexibility, it becomes way too flexible. It changes from its original position and it's mostly seen in the lower lid. And we can test this by the test is a name of the test that is called as pinch test. So what we do in this test is we pinch the lower eyelid and then we move it a little bit away from the globe and the relative delay and the absence of snap in the ability to regain its normal anatomical position. So when you pinch it from the globe and the time it takes to come back to its original place, that is tested by this pinch test, which helps in determining the amount of the lid laxity that is present. And the next change we see is the reduction in the orbital fat. So what happens, the fat around the orbit will slowly start to reduce. So because of that, the eyelid, the eyes will look sunk in. There's a sinking in of the eye. And um, it becomes more prominent and it makes the lid laxity more prominent. And there is progressive laxity. And if, and if the laxity, if the loss uh, of the structure of the lid, it keeps on increasing, it will result in punctal aversion. So in punctal aversion, what happens, the punctum that is present will be exposed outside and it later causes the aversion of the eyelid margin. So firstly, the punctum will be averted outside and then along with that, the eyelid margin will also get averted outside. So this condition is called as ectoprion and it also causes watery eye. So what happens if the eyelid, if the lid margin is exposed outside, so the inner layer that is present in an eyelid surface will also be exposed. So it will cause irritation in the lower lid. And if it gets severe, the eye, if it, the condition is very severe, the entire eyelid will get turned out. So this condition is called as ectoprion. The next one is endoprion. So ecto means outside, entro means inside. So it will be turned inwards. So uh, if the pre-tarsal orbicularis muscle, muscle of the muscle that is responsible for closing of the eyelid, if it's stronger, the eyelid may undergo inversion. So it will in turn towards the inside. Uh, and it will cause the eyelash, eyelashes to rub against the cornea. So when it is turned inside, it will cause the eyelashes to touch the cornea and the patient will feel discomfort. The next thing is excessive upper eyelid skin. So there will be excess of upper eyelid skin that is uh, caused by, because of the anterior migration of the pre-aponeurotic fat pads. So we know that in our orbit, there is two type of fat. One is central fat and medial fat. So central fat is also called as pre-aponeurotic fat. So what happens is migration of this fat and uh, this uh, results in dermatochelyasis, which is excessive skin on the eyelid. So there'll be a lot of fat deposition on the eyelid and it causes baggy eyes. And since our eyelid cannot hold that much of fat, and if there's something heavy, it tends to, you know, like come down. So because of that, because of holding a lot of fat that is caused by dermatochelyasis, slowly it will cause 
serotosis. So we know that ptosis is the drooping of the eyelid. Serotosis is the ptosis that is caused by any other abnormalities other than the abnormality of the elevator muscle. So when the weight in the eyelid increases, it will cause serotosis when the excessive orbital fat is present. The next thing is the deepening of the line of expression. And it is mainly seen in the lateral lid margin and it is also called as cross feet because it looks like a cross feet and it can be relieved cosmetically. Um, Botox is done. There are certain cosmetic surgeries that is done to relieve this uh, line of expression. The next thing is decreased melanocytes. So there's a decrease in the number of the melanocyte cells present in the eye. So melanocyte cells are responsible for pigmentation. They give the color to our skin, our hair, or eyelashes, or eyebrows, or whatever. So there's a decrease in the melanocytes, and there's decrease in the Langerhans cells. So what happens in, if the melanocytes are decreased, it will cause decreased pigmentation. So eyebrows and eyelashes slowly undergo depigmentation. There is decrease in the melanin pigment present in the eyebrow and eyelashes. And next, moving on to the lacrimal gland changes. So lacrimal gland is the gland that is responsible for secreting aqueous layer of the tear film. It produces the aqueous layer, which helps in keeping the eye hydrated. So the first thing that we see in it is decreased quantity and quality of tear. So the first change in old age is, this is a very common thing. Uh, there is not enough tear is produced by the lacrimal gland. And uh, so the lubrication and nourishment of the eye is decreased. So if there's not enough tear produced, then there'll be less lubrication and nourishment of the eye and it will cause dry eye. The next change that we see is lactoferrin and lysozyme decreases. So these are the certain proteins present, glycoproteins present in our eye, uh, which in lactoferrin is responsible for antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory actions. So it helps in um, fighting against any foreign organisms or it helps in anti-inflammatory actions. And lysozyme, it protects our eye from bacterial invaders. So when lactoferrin and lysozyme is absent in our eye or it decreases in our eye, then obviously our eye will be more prone to infection. So it is seen in old age. The next thing is weak lacrimal pump mechanism. So a lacrimal pump mechanism, as we know, is a mechanism that is uh, responsible for elimination of tears in our eye. But the, pro uh, the mechanism of this pump slowly gradually decreases as we age. And we know that it operates by blinking of the eye. So lacrimal pump mechanism, it operates by blinking of the eye and it is caused by the constriction of the orbicularis muscle. So it will, the, this, the process of this mechanism will slowly slow down. The next change that we see is the widening of the middle nasolacrimal duct in males. So nasolacrimal naso duct, it carries tears away from the eye into the nasal activity. But what happens in old age, it widens in size. So moving on to the next ocular stru structure that is cornea. Cornea, it is a transparent part of the eye that covers the front portion of the eye. So we know that cornea, it is a transparent portion. So we'll see what are the changes that happens in the old age in cornea. So the first thing is change in the corneal toricity curvature. The curvature of the cornea will change and it causes alteration and refraction or in the elderly. So if the curvature of the cornea is changing, obviously the refraction of the elderly will also see change. So what happens, main thing that happens is there is change from the with the rule astigmatism to against the rule astigmatism. So we know that with the rule astigmatism, the vertical meridian of the cornea, it is more steeper than the horizontal meridian. And eye has more refractive power in the vertical axis. And because of that, the patient is, uh, if he faces difficulty in seeing horizontal lines, like he's not able to make out the letter E and F when he has with the rule astigmatism. And in against the rule astigmatism, the horizontal meridian is much more steeper than the vertical meridian. 
and the eye, it will have more refractive power in the horizontal axis. And hence, the patient has difficulty focusing vertical oriented targets. So already the patient will have presbyopia since he is old. So along with that, he'll also face against the rural astigmatism. So it is very important for elderly patients to have a regular checkup and uh, they can wear bifocals, bifocal lenses too. And it will help them in vision if they wear bifocal lenses. So the next thing that we see is there's a decrease in the corneal luster. That is, there is a decrease in the shine of the cornea. And the next thing is decrease in the corneal sensitivity. There will be decrease in the sensitivity of the cornea. The patient will not able to sense if there is something in his eye. It will be the response that is received will be a little bit, little bit slower. And there is increase in the corneal fragility. So our cornea becomes more fragile as we age. Uh, these uh, Hudson's daily line, uh, these are some of the conditions that we see in old age. In this, what happens, the pigmented line is formed. It is caused because of the iron deposition and it is mainly in the junction between the middle and the lower cornea. So the junction where the middle and lower cornea meet in there, in that portion, you will see a pigmented line that is caused because of the iron deposition. And this deposition comes from the tear film and it is over the opposing lower lid margin. So in this picture, we can see uh, the Huston's Tehili line. The next thing that is, uh, the next change that we see in elderly people is Arcus senile. It is very common uh, and it is the asymptomatic bilateral yellow white deposit. So it is, it doesn't have any symptoms and it is bilateral yellow white deposit. So it is yellow and white in color and it begins inferior, inferiorly and then superiorly. So it starts forming in the inferior portion and it slowly progresses on the superior portion. So it will be formed in the inferior part and then it will slowly progress and cover the entire peripheral cornea. And it is separated from the limbus by a thin band of clear cornea. So it will be like a ring around the cornea and will be separated from the strong, from the limbus by a narrow band, uh, band of clear cornea. The next thing is Hessel Henley bodies. So it is a localized thickening in the periphery of the endothelium. Uh, we will see thickening in the endothelium part of the cornea, corneal layer. And it can be seen in specular reflection or technique by using the slit lamp. And if the decimates membrane outgrowth, if there is uh, outgrowth in the decimates membrane axially, it uh, gets deposited on the corneal endothelium and this condition is called as corneal cutata. The next thing is Glückenberg spindle. So it is a deposition of the UL pigment. So there's a deposition of the UL pigment on a corneal endothelium. So it gets the uveal de uh, pigment deposi deposition is on the corneal endothelium. And this condition is called as Krukenberg's spindle and it doesn't interfere with the vision of the patient. And next thing is age-related dystrophies. Uh, it is the change in the corneal endothelium or stroma. There will be certain age, because of the age, the corneal endothelium and stroma might change. The structure of the endothelium will change. The next thing is the endothelial cell density decreases. So this endothelial layer of our cornea, as we know, it will not regenerate. Like once any destruction or any trauma is there, it will not degenerate. Um, and when and when we age, the endothelium cell density decreases slowly. And if it is decreasing, the remaining cells that are present, it will slowly increase in this shape in order to cover up the cornea. And this condition is called as pleomorphism. Pleomorphism is basically the change in the size of the cell. So when the endothelium cells are decreasing in the density, it is covered up by other endothelial cells. And this condition is called as pleomorphism. The next thing is decrease in the phagocytically active cells after infection. So we know that phagocytes are the cells that helps during the infection. But as we age, there is a decrease in the phagocytes 
functioning of the phagocytes uh, during the infection. The next change is the increase in the tear contact time. So the tear contact time increases as we age. The next thing is the increase in the epithelial permeability to fluorescence. So the um, epithelium becomes more permeable to the fluorescein pigment. So more fluorescein gets absorbed by the epithelium. The next thing is the decrease in the resistance to infection. So the infection, the resistance uh, to, res to ability to resist the infection also decreases. The next change that we see is the decrease in the endothelial cells. So endothelial cells will decrease and it will cause cor corneal thickening and opacities are seen in the cornea and then it in turn causes the blooding of the vision. Next structure is conjunctiva. So conjunctiva, it is the line th that covers the inside of the eyelids and the sclera. So we'll see the changes that takes place in the conjunctiva. First one is pinguela. Um, it is a yellowish triangular uh, structure that is seen with a small raised patches and it grows close to the cornea. In this picture, we can see yellow triangular structures which is slowly erased and it grow, uh, grows close to the cornea and the tissue in your conjunctival changes and creates small bumps. So in this condition, the conjunctival cells that is present, the tissues that is present will change and the bumps, uh, small bumps are formed. And these bumps are uh, constituted of calcium or fat or both are present. The next thing is pterygium. Uh, pterygium, it is a, a pinkish triangular tissue growth of cornea. It is pink in color, it is triangular in shape, and it is grown on the cornea. And it starts off from the cornea near the nose. So it starts nasally and it covers the pupil. And when the pupil is covered, it in hand, in turn, it affects the vision of the patient. There is a decrease in the Langerhans hand cells and there's a decrease in the transparency of the conjunctiva, and then there is torcus, blood vessels. So moving on to the next structure, it is clera, and it is the white portion of the eye. The first change that is seen is, we know that adult sclera is white, our uh, sclera is white in color, but what happens as we age, it slowly starts to turn yellow. It is caused because of the dehydration and lipid deposition. So as we start to age, there is a dehydration and there is lipid deposition on the sclera and the white color that was present before, it slowly turns into yellow. And yellowing or browning of the sclera is also caused because of the exposure to UV light. So more and more exposure to UV light will cause yellowing of the sclera. And the next thing is um, it can be also caused by wind and dust and more random patches of pigment. So because of the dust particles or anything or exposure to UV light, it will slowly cause decoloration of the sclera. And the bluish cast due to the thinning of the skin. Uh, and there will be a bluish cast that is caused because of thinning of the skin in the sclera, which can be caused because of any disease. Moving on to the next thing that is the anterior chamber changes. So what changes comes in the anterior chamber? Firstly, the decrease in the depth of the anterior chamber is seen. And the second thing is a decrease in the power of the trabecular meshwork. So trabecular meshwork, they are the spongy tissues which is present in the cornea through which aqueous humor flows out. So this is the tissue from which the aqueous humor is flowing out. So it will be a decrease potency of the trabecular meshwork, there'll be a decreased power of the trabecular meshwork and it causes sclerosis. So sclerosis, is it is the cloudiness, hardening and yellowing of the central region of the lens in the eye. So the central region is our nucleus. So because of this condition, it will slowly cloud and there'll be hardening and yellowing, the color changes and it will slowly become hard. And this condition is called as sclerosis. And it hinders the vision of the patient. Moving on to the next structure, it is ciliary body and iris changes. So there is a decrease in the output of uh, the Aqueous humor, the output of the aqueous humor slowly decreases. There's a resistance 
in the output of the aqueous humor. The second change that we see is hyalinization of the ciliary processes. Um, hyalinization is basically like the tissue, it becomes more, ne this, the tissue starts necrosis, like there is the destruction of the tissues present in the ciliary body and formation of the fibrous tissue. So there will be hyalinization of the ciliary process, the tissues will start destructing and the formation of the fibrous tissue is seen. The next change that we see is the pupil, it becomes smaller. So the original size of the pupil, it slowly will start to decrease and the iris becomes less reactive as we age. So while having to dilate the patient, it becomes much more difficult because the iris, it will become less reactive and the dilation becomes difficult. The next change that we see is the loss of iris pigment. So there will be de uh, decrease in the pigment of the iris and it can be seen by using iris trans illumination on the slit lamp examination, especially the pupillary margins. We can make out that the iris pigment is decreasing. And the next change that we see is the decrease in the elasticity of the lens capsule. The lens capsule's elasticity decreases and there is compactness on the lens fibers. So lens fibers will compact together they will come together and there is a shape and tone change of the ciliary muscles. So the shape and the tone of the muscles will change. The structure of the ciliary muscles is changing and that is causing decrease of the amplitude of accommodation. And this altogether causes presbyopia. And the next thing is the next structure, ocular structure is lens. So the changes that happens in the lens is during old age, it will absorb more blue light. So when as we age, it will our lens will start absorbing more blue light and it is caused because of the accumulation of yellow pigment. Like I said before, lens, it will, uh, sclera, it is um, uh, depositing the yellow pigment. It can be caused because of the UV light and this accumulation of the yellow pigment in the lens, it will cause more absorption of the blue light. The next change that we see is decrease in the transmission of the blue light. So uh, the transmission, the blue light uh, passing through the lens will decrease. And this is a cataractogenic process. Matlab, it is a, one of the process through which cataract happens. And this condition is called as blue blindness. And blue blindness, we can usually like see in painters, like oh, old age people who are painters, they tend to use more um, blue color because the transmission of the blue light is less in their eye. So because of that, they use more blue color and it can be seen in their paintings and all. The next thing, the next change that we see is nucleosclerosis. That is the hardening of the lens, and it is a biochemical and photochemical. It is caused by various biochemical and photochemical changes. So there is the hardening of the middle portion of the lens, that is the nucleus. It will slowly start to harden in structure. The next change that we see is increase in the refractive index, which is also called as lens paradox. And it is caused because of the increase in the thickness and increase in the structure. And since the structure of the lens is increasing, it should cause myopia, but it is causing hypermetropia because the refractive index of the cortex, cortex is also changing along with it. The next change that we see is the formation of cataract, which is a very common thing. And cataract is the opacification of the lens and it affects with the vision of the patient. The next change that we see is the radius of the curvature decreases. There's a decrease in the radius of curvature of the lens. The next thing is presbyopia. Um, presbyopia, it is uh, attributable to change in the capsular elasticity and lens hardening. It is caused because of the change in the capsular elasticity and it is also caused because of the lens hardening and modification of the cortical fiber cells with cytoplasm and nuclear protein solubility. So all of these factors together causes presbyopia. 
The next is vitreous humor changes. So in vitreous humor, there is a change in the collagen fibrils and hyaluronic acid. So when the collagen fibrils and the hyaluronic acid changes, it causes the formation of floaters. So floaters are basically like uh, certain, certain uh, objects that we see in our vision which are not actually there and it is seen in elderly patient and it is caused because of the change in the collagen fibrils and it is usually harmless but it affects the vision of the patient but it doesn't cause any harm to the patient. The next thing is the condensation of the vitreous gel. So we know that vitreous humor consists of the vitreous gel. So as we age, the gel slowly starts to liquefy. So before it was solidified or jelly, semi-solid. So afterwards, it turns into liquid and there is enhancement of the fibril fibrily structures. So uh, as the condensation of the vitreous gel happens, there is enhancement of the fibrily structure of vitreous and it causes in turn increase in the mobility of the fibrillary structure. So as uh, the structure is changing, it will increase the mobility of the fibrillary structure. So whatever structures that were present in that fibril will slowly increase in the movement. The movement of that structure will slowly increase and therefore it will cause formation of the optically empty space. So as the movement is increasing, there'll be formation of the empty spaces that is called as lacunae. And the next change is as the vitreous liquefaction is increasing, it will cause uh, lacunae coalesce formation, forming large cavities. So these large cavities are eventually followed by shrinkage of the vitreous body. So it will form large cavity and then there'll be shrinkage of the vitreous body from the retina once 50% um, once liquefaction from semi-solid to liquid is taken place, that condition is called as posterior vitreous detachment. So in this picture, we can see posterior vitreous detachment. The next change, the next ocular structure is retina. Mm -hmm. So the changes that play, uh, take place in the retina, firstly, it is the visual function change. There is a decreased sensitivity of the visual field and there's decreased contrast sensitivity that is caused by media, media opacities that are present in the retina and it will slowly decrease the contrast sensitivity. So if the contrast sensitivity is decreasing the patient, they will not be able to see the depth, like the, the ability to make out the depth decreases. So therefore, like while coming down the stairs, it might be difficult for them. Or uh, when they have to walk on the street, they, it might be difficult for them. The next visual function change that we see is decrease in the dark adaptation time. That is the ability in uh, when the person comes from a light to a dark room, the ability by which the rod cells are formed, it decreases. The next thing is the decrease in the visual acuity. So as we age, the visual acuity slowly decreases. Presbyopia is formed. Uh, presbyopia is caused in the old age. The next thing is the neuro, neuronal cell loss and degeneration. So in this, there is a decrease in the ganglion cells and optic nerve axons. So the number of the ganglion cells will start to decrease and optic nerve axons are seen. And there is decrease in the photoreceptors. So photoreceptors are the rods and cones. Rods help in uh, vision in the dark and uh, cones help in the color vision. So as we age, these photoreceptors will slowly decrease in number. The next change that we see is neurosensory retinal change. In this, there is a thickening of basement membrane of the retina and corpora amylase bodies will increase and lipofusin will also increase. So lipofusin is a very highly fluorescent material and it, when it increases, it accumulates in the retinal pigment epithelium 
and it is usually the hallmark of aging like when people age they usually have an increase in the lipofusion the next change that we see is um age related macular degeneration so in this there is a loss of center of field of vision so the central field of vision is lost in this picture we can see age related macular degeneration where the central vision is lost the next thing is diabetic retinopathy patients who have diabetes so the retinal changes that causes because of diabetes is seen and in this is damage of blood vessels in the tissue at the back of the eye so the blood vessels that are present are damaged the next thing is hypertensive retinopathy so patients who have high blood pressure in that the retinal changes that is caused because of high blood pressure is called as hypertensive retinopathy and it causes vascular damage there is a damage in the vascular structure of the eye in this picture we can see hypertensive retinopathy the next thing is central retinal vein occlusion so in this condition what happens is the main vein like the main vein that is draining the blood from the retina it closes off partially or completely there is a complete or partial uh, closure of the retina which is draining the blood out of the retina and it causes Uh, blur division. So in this picture, we can see the next thing, the next change that we see is branch retinal vein occlusion. In this condition, what happens? The branch of the retinal vein becomes blocked. So the different branches of the retinal veins that are present, one of it gets blocked, or two, three of it gets blocked. And when this vein gets blocked, the blood and the fluid that is present in the retina will start to spill out it will start to come out of the retinal veins so branch retinal vein occlusion is seen here in this picture the next condition that is seen is a central retinal artery occlusion so in this condition there is a blockage of the blood to the retina of one eye so the blood that supplies the eye of one retin uh, of like the blood that is supplying the retina of one eye gets blocked and because of this central retinal artery occlusion there is a sudden loss of eyesight the person might lose his vision suddenly so we can make that out in this picture the next condition is branch retinal artery occlusion in this what happens is the blockage in the smaller arteries so the smaller arteries the branch arteries of the retina gets blocked and there is a loss of the section of the visual field so the visual field is certain portions of the visual field are lost because of this and is usually one sided so moving on to the optic nerve changes uh the first change that we'll see in optic nerve is the decrease in the number of blood vessels so there are a lot of blood vessels that are present in the optic nerve and the number of it slowly starts to decrease and as the number of the blood vessels decreases there is a pale color of the optic disc we'll see the color of the optic disc becomes more pale the next change that we see is dull reflex so when we uh, force a light then we we'll, uh, the reflex that is seen will be dull in the macula this got next change that we see is swollen axon there will be swollen axon at the lamina cribrosa and the next change is the increase in the thickness of the connective tissue so the connective tissue thickness will start to increase Uh, of the optic nerve and there is an increase in the elastic fibers the next change that we see is there is a greater visibility of larger choroidal vessels and this condition is called as senile thyroid fundus next change that we see in the optic nerve is peripapillary atrophy so peripapillary atrophy is basically the atrophy or the thinning in the layer of the retina we know that retina has 10 layers so The, the layers of the retina will slowly start to thin or there is an atrophy which is seen 
and the retinal pigment epithelium around the optic nerve. And also the retinal pigment that is present in the retina will start to become thinner. The next change that we see is peripheral retinal degeneration, uh, which is also called as lattice degeneration. And uh, in this, there is a thinning of the peripheral retina. So the peripheral part of the retina will slowly start to become thin. And it is, uh, and the peripheral part of our retina it is very important and very essential for maintaining the vision of the patient. But in this condition, what happens, the peripheral retina will start to become more thin. And because of that, the vision might be hindered. So these are the references. Thank you. Thank you, Sumaya. It was such a nice presentation. And I Thank enjoyed you. your session. And hope that our audience had enjoyed it too. So shall we move to the question answer session now? Yes, sure. And so a small request to our audience, queries related to our topics are highly recommended. So the questions we get are, how do you check dark adaptation? Uh, dark adaptation is uh, checked, like dark adapt uh, adaptation is basically like uh, uh, the ability of the patient to like the time that it takes for the patient to come from the dark area into the light so it is uh, checked by uh, measuring the time that it takes for a patient to come from a dark room into a light room so that is how it is checked so the next question is what type of corneal astigmatism do we see on increasing age and why um, yes, okay. So in increasing age, you will see against the rule astig uh, astigmatism. Uh, there is a before, like, there is more against the rule astigmatism that is seen in the patients as they age. And in against the rule astigmatism, the horizontal meridian will become more steep. So for the patient who had with the rule astigmatism, it will slowly start to become against the rule astigmatism and their horizontal meridian. Hello, Sumaya. So I guess we had some technical error. Uh, so we would end our presentations here only. Thank you, Sumaya. Thank you, all the audience, and thank you for Optum team. And thank you, all audience, for being supportive and connected to us. Our session ends here. See you again. <laughs>